Right then guys, still in the light tent. This time we're going to be uh, taking a look at the Gigabyte X79 UD5. Uh, first look for us really. So, we'll have a look, quick look around the bo box. Obviously, uh, 3D power and 3D BIOS is something that we uh, spoke about previously, or rather uh, a video that I uploaded previously that uh, Gigabyte had made. If I spin the box over, do it quickly with you there, we'll have a look around. It talks about the 3D power um, up there. Now, ultra durable 3, we've all seen this before. Two times copper PCB. Have a look at the board itself. There's a talk about here about um, Blue Way full. Um, sorry, Blue Way Blu-ray full lossless audio. Three 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 logo. Dual BIOS. On-off charge. Four channel uh, memory. So there's eight slots. Uh, talk about the dual BIOS here with a button, um, and it's saying it's got onboard power button, overclock button, and onboard reset button. Uh, you get your first look at the board there. Slightly different from the uh, earlier images, but there you go. I suppose we best get the box open and have a look at the accessories. Right then guys, quick look around uh, all of the accessories. First of all we'll take a look at the Bluetooth and a Wi-Fi dongle. This has actually got a USB uh, internal header on it, which is what this cable is for, to go from an internal USB header up onto this. There is also a uh, normal USB header there as well. But anyway, there's your two aerials. They don't appear to be magnetic. I was just checking. But they're, they're obviously they can sit on your case. And they've got the little screw connectors to go onto the uh, back of the card. Uh, we have some uh, SLI and Crossfire bridges, which are all black. Um, a few of us have said this is a long time coming that we're actually getting black uh, Crossfire and SLI um, all the time. Pretty much all the X79 stuff I've seen has had black cables few um, packs of SATA cables there. Obviously you get the manual there for the motherboard itself which has got the driver disc inside and then the manual for the Wi-Fi um, and yeah just your manuals really. So that's there. And you also get your uh, front panel USB 3 which is uh, the same size as a three and a half inch bay. So if your case isn't um, USB 3 compatible you can uh, plonk this in the front of your case um, and there you have a USB 3 connectivity in the front anyway and then also here we've got the uh, the back panel but I suppose now I really should stop yabbering and get on with actually showing you the motherboard right then peeps here we go, our first look at the Gigabyte GA X79 UD5. It's a pretty board. It's changed a little bit since the uh, original pictures that come out. They've uh, added grey slots on rather than all black. And there's a couple of SATA ports missing here as well. Um, also, something that they've done is they've uh, uh, all the power on it is now digital. That was the reason why the uh, uh, these were slightly delayed. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a slow walk round it now. You can see uh, eight pin power up at the top here. Uh, that's saying system fan two, but you've got the CPU fan is there. But if we come down, don't forget you can pause at any moment. I'm this is literally my first look at it as well, so I'm trying to pick things out to talk to you about. 
one thing I will say is that PCI Express 16 times lane, that's wired as an 8 lane, and that's wired as a 16. So you've got a good few slots in between the two main um, 16 times lane slots. So if you were going to run like dual cards, one goes there, one goes there, obviously that will be covered up by your graphics card. So then you've still got a good two clear slots between the cards. Um, but obviously you can run triple SLI if you wanted to, but it just means that you've got plenty of breathing room between the cars. This is a really nice spacing. Uh, also, it means if you've got a card in the bottom one, uh, it will fit in a normal case as well. Okay, it's going to be right at the bottom of your motherboard, but you don't need that kind of eighth slot uh, as you would do with some of the other boards. Um, but yeah, still, it's quite a nice layout in that respect. That's your front panel audio. Uh, that says it's this BDIF. Um, that's your uh, Firewire connector. System Fan 4. That says it's the TPM connection. Uh, that's front panel USB 2. There's three of them. We come over here, we can see the front panel connectors. Uh, that's your reset switch. System Fan 3. Coming up, we can see this uh, heatsink. Give you a good look at this heatsink because I really like the blue, and I mean like really like the blue. You can see the way the light's catching it there. I do really like that. It's a lovely shade. It's actually showing up quite a little bit lighter on the camera compared to what it is, maybe because of the light. But it's actually a, a more of a that there's looking almost like a very light blue, but the way I'm seeing it here is quite a sky blue. It's quite a, a really nice blue. Um, Moving on, four or two banks of US, uh, USB, two banks of SATA 2. Obviously there's four connections and then we've got more SATA 6 there. Front panel USB 3. Um, then we've got obviously a 24 um, pin connector for power. Coming up we've got a power switch at the top. Uh, I did forget to mention there's a, another fan there, system fan 1. So yeah, obviously you can see that we've got um, uh, proper quad channel memory, eight DIMM slots all together. Close up look at the uh, digital power. And another look at that, one of the heat sexy heat sinks. I really do like that. Now, one thing I will say is there's been a lot of confusion. People think that uh, this is going to support 1366 CPUs. It doesn't, not at all. The only thing that they share is the spacing for the um, uh, heat sinks, but rather than with uh, 1366 where you uh, it just pushed through the board, these have actually got threads. So a lot of your heat sinks are either gonna need updating or replacing. Um, so yeah, no 1366 support out of the box at all. CPUs, just no. Um, heat sinks, there's a possibility you can get different brackets. Uh, Noctua have already done an upgrade kit, uh, which you can get free as long as you can prove that you've got a Noctua cooler, like with your receipt and whatnot. Um, but essentially, uh, if you've not got a heat sink or anything already, you just need to make sure that you've got something that uh, supports 2011. But anyway, there we go, guys and girlies. The only thing now left for us to do is take a look at the back panel. Now, we start at this end, and you can see that you've got PS2 port here and two USB 2s. You've got the uh, BIOS reset switch at the bottom, BIOS select switch there, and then the overclock button on the back panel. You've then also got at the but bottom uh, there. The one on the left is uh, eSATA and uh, USB, I think. They may both support USB. I can't really tell just by looking at them there. Um, but eSATA and USB 3. The red is USB 2. Firewire, two more USB 2s. USB 3, USB 2. 
and you've got uh, gigabit ethernet there and then obviously your audio here including the digital optical out so that's your back panel we'll take another look at the board and there you go that's the end of our first look Don't forget guys, if you've never seen one of my videos before, please subscribe, comment, favourite, like, do all that kind of stuff. Clicking buttons is good. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, Tiny Tom Logan, there's another video for you, with the wrong hand, out. <laughs>